Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Honotak and we are playing Stellaris with the newest DLC Utopia. Parax has been so kind and has given me a press code um, for the game. Uh, it is going to release on April the 6th, um, Thursday. And uh, we're going to play as the Architects Foundation. I'm just going to go over the new features in a second. So um, what is my goal for this game? Um, we're going to play as these guys. They are intelligent, um, industrious and natural engineers. And what we're going to try with them is we're going to play as tall as possible. Um, so trying to build mega structures, ring worlds, um, Dyson spheres. And orbital habitats, because uh, we are pacifists, so we're not going to start any wars. We're fanatic pacifists, so peace must be must be kept. We could join a federation and get into some wars that way, but uh, our population might not like it. And we're also materialists, so we are tinkerers and builders and stuff. So, after the successful creation of several experimental subspace fields, the finest minds of the Architects Foundation have finished development of the first warp drives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. We're being ruled over by um, first architect Cax. Or Sax. Cax, I guess. And we live on our capital foundation in the, uh, the Forge system. We're over here in the spiral galaxy, so we have um, four arms. It's it's the, the shape that I prefer, although I would like to have that outer ring as well. That makes it more like our own galaxy. But yeah, um, so what is new? What is new in YouTube here? Actually, you have a bunch of stuff, and at first glance, I'm pretty sure that you guys see that we now have food. So food is stored globally, which is amazing. You have a certain amount that you can store, and if you have reached the maximum of your stockpile, then everything above that, any growth above that, goes into population growth. And uh, um, how effective that um, surplus is in creating population growth is dependent on the size of the population that it goes towards. So um, a surplus of three over here that we have is much more useful to a, an empire that only has 10 pops as compared to an empire that has 100 pops. So that's really, really good. We're finally able to specialize planets with food. Um, and that also sort of removes the need of pushing new colonies fanatically towards food. You can just have a couple of bread basket planets that really go all in uh, towards food production. And then you can have a bunch of planets that don't have to produce any food. Like our capital, for example, where we might want to use those tiles for something else. Um... And then we have this, we have the Unity system. That is a new system that uh, has basically joined the game with uh, with Utopia. I do think that uh, these traditions is something that everyone gets, even people that don't buy the DLC, but I do think that the Ascension perks are n uh, uh, a paid feature. Um, so what do these do? They basically allow you to... Um, to fine-tune your, your civilization. So we have harmony, prosperity, domination, expansion, supremacy, diplomacy, discovery. And each of these confer bonuses. Um, one when you adopt them, one when you finish them all, and then some for the things in here. So they're basically idea groups from Europe Universalis. We have um, a starting bonus and, and a finisher. Um, uh, for example, the prosperity. Um, this thing reduces ship cost and building cost by 15%, very potent. And then you can go for sh building upkeep reduced by 10%, ship upkeep reduced by 10%. Then you have the Transstellar Corporations. That uh, that unlocks a private colony ship, which um, you don't pay minerals for that colony ship. You pay um, you pay energy credits. And that's actually kind of useful because um, it's I think it's half the cost. I think 175 um, energy credits for stuff uh, for, for their colony ship and that's really good because that can really help you um, push out the boat for your early colonization if you are um, because you can use basically both resources to push your colony growth and then you have the um, pursuit of profit and each time you finish one of these traditions you get a one ascension perk slot um, free and these are very powerful stuff um, so you can get increased border range. So some of these just give a flat bonus, like uh, yeah, increased border range, um, increased research speed, um, governing ethics, attraction, and unity output. You can have clear blocker costs minus 100%, so you can just remove any and all blockers uh, for free. 
Um, you can have more core sector systems, which is pretty nifty, I gotta say. And then uh, there are also some uh, some ascension perks that basically allow you to change your species as a whole. Uh, there are three paths. You can either go for the engineered evolution, um, so basically genetically modifying your species to the max, gaining more um, trade points, becoming more efficient. Um, when modifying your species, that's the one way that you can go. Then the second way that you can go is you can um, first turn your people into cyborgs, um, buffing them significantly, and then you can even transfer their minds into um, synthetic um, robots uh, completely. So <laughs> your whole your whole society is completely transferred into into those synths. Um, and then the third thing is basically awakening the psionic potential of your people and then making contact with um, a psychic otherworldly realm beyond our own plane of existence, um, the Shroud. Actually, I do think that the music is still a little bit loud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that down. There's new music in this, so I'm quite happy with that, but I don't want it to, to overpower my voice. There, by the way, there's a new um, music player in the game. Um, that's also, we know that from, we've seen that in European Universalis already. And there's a bunch of new music in there, uh, composed by Andreas Waldetoft, best composer. Um, yeah, right, so uh, where was I? Traditions, Ascension Perks. So yeah, the third way is, yeah, make a contract with that shroud. And what we want to do in this series is we want to go for... Um, we're going to go for some mega projects, so... Uh, this is the first trait that we need. We need Voidborn. Um, so that allows us to, to build orbital habitats. Um, they function as 12 tile Gaia planets, but with their own set of buildings. So they're pretty efficient in terms of research and in terms of energy creation, not that efficient in terms of um, going for minerals and stuff. But they basically allow you to build tall. And then uh, we can get this master builder thing. So there are a bunch of mega structures in there. Um, this buffs their build speed and reduces their, their build cost, which is actually a really good, um, really good perk. And then we can either go for the Galactic Wonders, which allows us three mega structures, the Sentry Array, the Science Nexus, and the Dyson Sphere. Um, or, and we can go for the Ring World and actually build a Ring World. They're very, very expensive. Like, um, you start these in, in different stages. And even just going for the building site costs 20,000 minerals. And then from that building site, you, you build the, in the frame. And I think that cost 40,000 or something. And then you build the, um, the individual segments. You can build the segments simultaneously. So it's not quite as long, but they still take a, a long time. I think 40 years just for the just for the frame. And yeah, these are also um, interesting. So the sentry array basically allows you to see any fleet movements um, of other empires. If you have it fully built up, you have basically an active sensor link for the whole galaxy. You see all the fleets and where they're moving. And the science nexus is yeah sort of a an in uh, a beefed up university in space that gives you, if it's fully built up, plus 50 um, science um, in all the things. So 50 physics, 50 society, 50 engineering. And the Dyson Sphere is um, basically a, a frame of solar panels that completely encompasses a sun. Um, you get that in different stages, but at the final stage, the sun is completely um, engulfed um, or, or shrouded by the Dyson Sphere, and you get 400 energy credits um, yeah, per, per month. So that's very powerful stuff, very powerful stuff, and that's where I want to go. Um, if we go for any of the Ascension things, I'm not sure. We might go for the Flash is Weak and the Synthetic Evolution. I haven't, I haven't decided yet. I mean, this is also not illogical, the engineered evolution and the evolutionary mastery. Um, I think both of these are kind of nice for science-y uh, people. We'll see how it goes, but m mainly I want to go for... Um, I want to go for mega structures as much as possible. Um, and the other new feature that we have in there 
Um, where is it? Faction. So internal politics has been completely reworked. Every pop now has only one um, one ethics. Uh, prior to that, they have uh, they basically had the ethics of your empire, uh, but now they have either um, the materialist. Um, these guys have materialists, and these are pacifists. And yeah, they have a certain attraction. And the way that works is we'll have factions form naturally um, during the course of the game, and they have certain demands. It's not just suppress the faction. Um, or kill the faction or something you can actually interact with these guys if the factions are happy like for example if the egalitarian league is happy because everyone has the same rights and all that then you get uh, an influence boost and you can even sort of um, embrace those factions even if they don't follow your governing ethics uh, could for example embrace the spiritualist um, faction by um, by decree by demand um, and then that would increase the attraction value of spiritualism for our people and they would sort of slowly drift towards that. So that's a way more interactive system than uh, what we what we had prior to this. Um, and the way that that faction stuff works is um, every pop that belongs to a faction has a max happiness, a max base happiness of the faction happiness. So if you have a very unhappy faction, all the pops that belong to that faction will be super unhappy and it's going to be uh, drastically reducing your productivity. So um, managing the factions that you have now has a real import, a real value. And I'm, I'm pretty thrilled that that actually um, is a thing now. That makes me super happy. Um, anything else? Yeah, um, apparently home planets can actually be way bigger than the 15 that we had prior to this. Size 20 home planet is actually pretty amazing. I'm happy. Very happy with that. <laughs> That's great. So we won't have the need to go for Ringworld um, soon. I mean, it's it's just endgame stuff, right? Um, the Ringworld, um, we can't really go for tens and hundreds of thousands of minerals just like that. We also don't have the tech, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I'm looking forward to it. Um, other changes that I have to go through? Yeah, um, you can actually now give your species certain rights. Um, so, uh, for example, the citizenship, there's a bunch of stuff. This is our primary species, so I can't really take the citizenship away from them, but you have, you can make them slaves, you can make them undesirables, you can have a caste system um, that sort of um, makes some of them into slaves and the others enjoying the fruit of their labor. Um, you can have uh, people just live there, but not being able to um, go voting and stuff. You can have the living standards now, so one of the new things that have been introduced are consumer goods, shown by these um, space toasters, and that is to stop uh, mineral inflation. So if you have more pops, you have to produce more um, minerals to, to create consumer goods. Currently we are giving eight, uh, no, four of our mineral income is being used to produce consumer goods for our pops, which is, yeah. And depending on depending on which living standards you choose, um, people are going to be more happy and are going to use more consumer goods or less. So I think that's fine. Uh, we are currently only able to push this up to social welfare because we are not egalitarians. Um, yeah, can, all, can go all the way up to um, chemical bliss. I don't have, ah, I guess I need a tech, subdermal stimulation. Interesting. <laughs> and we can also take away their stuff, um, make them impoverished, but at the cost of some happiness. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Now we have military service, so you can either have full, or you can use them for armies, or not at all. Colonization rights, you can allow colonization or forbid colonization with, with that species. And then you can go for population control. You cannot, I don't think that you can control the, the population of your full citizens. So that's not a thing. Um, yeah, and it's also our main species. And then you can have migration control. So we have no migration control. People can just come to our lands if they want. And then if we had slavery and purging enabled, we could sort of um, decide which type of slavery that we want, right? We could have just... Um, 
battle thralls, so slaves specifically trained for um, fighting and all that. We could also have livestock uh, uh, thralls that we, uh, uh, livestock slaves that we basically eat. So we would, and we could even genetically engineer them to make them, to make them more tasty. And we could also genetically engineer them to remove their nervous system uh, or make them physically dull to pain so that we can kill and eat them without having too much of a bad conscience it's not going to happen in our in our empire but it's really nice that 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 kind of crazy stuff is actually possible and purge type also has a bunch of new things that you can um that you can change you can basically decide how you want to purge people if you just want to kill them off as fast as possible or send them into forced labor camps to use their workforce for something or if you just want to um, push them out of your borders um, or if you want to eat people because that's now that's now possible um, right so this is all this is all fine and dandy actually um, this would increase the need for consumer goods but would also buff up our happiness I'm not sure if that's not just worth it I like that the that there's a bit of a change to the social welfare now and it's just it's just costing minerals instead of also costing energy credits because that didn't make any sense um, but yeah, so we're in here, um, this is our situation in the galaxy. We are rather close to the center actually, firmly stuck in that in that one um, arm. That's that's kind of nice, so um, I think I covered most of the uh, most of the new features. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna survey that system and we're gonna use the... Oh, there's a colonizable planet right next to us. Holy cow, that's a great start. And looks like we have something in that system. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna use my my ships to go for some uh, some exploration around us in a very crazy fashion. But oh well. Uh, one of the th one of the the great changes that I've seen is that um, science ships, if they get pushed out of a system because they're hostiles present, they will return to their task and just basically serve it the next system on their list which is pretty amazing because that removes a lot of the um a lot of the micromanagement okay so that's queued up our ships are doing stuff we don't have currently anything to do for our construction ship here's the mega structure button that's kind of nice um what are we going to do on our planet um one change one minor change that you see over here is that planetary administrations no longer give food and minerals instead they give um, energy credits and unity Mm. Um, but the the food buildings have have basically been buffed to sort of make up for that for that loss in food. So and yeah, we do have global food. That's one of the one of the biggest changes. I'm super happy about that. Um, do we want more food? I think so. I think we want more food, but we also need more minerals. We also need more minerals because we we do want to build. We don't want to build fast. So I guess. Mm. I'm actually gonna queue up a mining network over here and I'm also gonna queue up a mining network over there and I think that's already gonna stress us pretty heavily um, one of the new buildings that you have now is the autochton monument that is going to give us some unity we're gonna build that next I think um, yeah we have a pretty good starting planet I'm kind of happy with that um, could remove those sprawling slums. I think I will remove those slums, and that's our that's our home planet um, dealt with. We have the physics research, and we have one plus one research alternative because we are science directorate. Um, yeah, that's a tough choice because all of these I want all of these definitely. Solar panel network could come in handy, especially in the beginning, but we don't have too many um, spaceports. I think we'll just go for the physics lab here. Although, deflectors. I think we'll go for deflectors. Because if we have to fight any space creatures, it's always nice to have that. We have a maniacal guy. Uh, let me just have a look if there are any geniuses. No. But Voidcraft would be really good. Voidcraft would be good. I think we're gonna go for... I think we're gonna go for Voidcraft guy here. Have you? I can, I can live with the reduced influence. And we're gonna need a second science ship anyway, so... I guess that's fine. So, society stuff, yeah. I mean, reduce growth time. Minus 10% reduce growth time. I think that's better than the biolab. Orbital hydroponics is also very good. 
But I think we're going to reduce the growth time. As soon as we get that, the better. And then over here... Oh, mining network too. That could be good. I mean, the engineering facility is nice, but... Or should we just slap some armor on our ships? No, I actually think that we're going to go for the, for the increased mining. Yeah, I went for the deflectors over here. I guess I'll go for the armor here as well. Um, it's actually a long time. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. I'm going to I'm gonna push up for, for more. Although, mining network. Engineering facility. It's it's a tough choice, especially at the beginning, because you need all the things. Um, but what I'm going to do is, I think we're going <laughs> to... I think we're going to end the episode. Holy cow, that's an, that's an episode where I did not unpause until the end. I'm really sorry about that, but I think that you might appreciate um, seeing all the changes and the, and the stuff. I've, that's not too much that has changed in these um, in these menus. Um, the main thing is the, is the traditions. I haven't really decided what we're going to go for yet. I've made good, um, good experiences with the prosperity thing. Um... But also the discovery thing is pretty nice and if you get that early you're gonna have a good time because you gain research points equal to a third of our monthly gain when surveying planets that's really good right you want that as as early as possible and then it does have some use for later because it's gonna buff your leader skill levels by one with the polytechnic education and assist research increases planet happiness that's also huge because um, you basically get an additional use out of the assist research thing. And uh, scientist recruitment cost is also very nice. And if you adopt it, you get um, research station build cost reduced by 33%. Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Mm. Adopting all discovery traditions increases our research speed by 10%. Yeah, I guess we're going to go for discovery as soon as we can. We still have to wait 24 months if I don't build any buildings that can boost us a little bit further. Expansion is also really good. The adoption effect alone uh, lets you start new colonies with one additional pop. That's huge, right? Um, adopting all of them increases your, your core sector systems by two. Um, you have this, so that reduces the cost for frontier outposts. Bringing them pretty much down, that reduces the growth pop. So, um, they are all very nice. This uh, sort of uh, gives you more vassal power. Um, tributaries, um, war demand for subjugation is reduced. That's pretty cool. Um, every vassal um, increases your naval capacity by 20%. And that is subject integration cooldown is reduced by 50%. And subjects like you more. Yeah, that's also very powerful, but not quite the playstyle that I want to go with. Mm -hmm. So yeah, next time we'll uh, survey the forge. Uh, we'll see what's right next to us. And... Um, there will be a lot more gameplay, a lot less explaining, <laughs> because I'm basically through through the stuff. The rest of the the rest of the new things will just encounter as we go and uh, get through them. But for now, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. That is especially helpful in the first episode of a series. And uh, if there's something that you didn't like, then please let me know in the comment. And if you want to see more of the series in the future, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I do hope that you join me next time. Thanks and bye bye.